Hello everyone, this is Deepak. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about object-oriented programming con concepts. Now Java is an object-oriented language and as a language that has the object-oriented features, Java supports constructs like objects and classes. If you have never done programming in, in object-oriented programming language, then it is time to learn few basic concepts before we write any serious code. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about what is object-oriented programming. We will understand what are objects and what are classes. We will understand what is state and behavior associated with the classes. We will also see the naming conventions required while creating classes, their behavior and their state. Now let's understand what is object-oriented programming. Now object-oriented programming is an approach to problem solving where we represent the real world problem in terms of objects and classes and then all the computations and uh, operations are carried out by the objects. These objects can also pass messages to each other and therefore achieve a task. Let's take an example where you have some objects in a company representing two employees, Mike and Joe. Now these Mike and Joe do all the work in that company, they talk to each other, they pass messages to each other and they represent the object. Let's go deep into objects. Look around, you will find so many examples of real world objects. Like bicycle, lamp, dog, etc. Your lamp has some state. It, it is either on or off. Your dog has also some state. It has color, it has weight. Right? And it also has some behavior. It can bark, it can eat, etc. So all these real world objects have two essential characteristics. They have some state and they have some behavior. If we turn around back to our employee object, that employee object, say Mike, can say that I have my state as name equal to Mike and age equal to 25. And my behavior is I can greet, I can say good morning, I am Mike. I can also work, Mike is working, right? Now this is essentially the high level concept of an object in an object oriented programming. In software world, objects are more or less similar to real time objects. Now let's put this knowledge into programming. Let's say a company called Cup FM International comes to us and says that guys we have two employees today, we can possibly grow to 1000 by next year. And our employees do two things, they either greet or they work. These are the two things they do. Can you please model this problem in Java world for us and create a program? So let's start. In order to help them, we should realize one thing. It would not be good to create separate definitions for each employee. Because all these employees have something similar. They have similar state they have similar behavior. So why not create a template or a blueprint out of it? And in Java, classes exactly represent this. Classes are templates or blueprints that represent similar type of objects. In order to see this in action, we will create a class, let's say employee.java. Now this class will represent an employee in our company. First of all, we would create the state of an employee. So what is the state of an employee? We can have two fields, uh, let's say string name and we can have his age. And then let's define behavior of an employee. As we have already learned, employee does two things. One, it can greet. So in order to greet, the employee simply says that good morning, I am whatever his name is. Similarly, there is another method 
which represents a behavior of work and in this scenario what we write is system.out.println whatever his name is so and so is working right now understand that when we create some objects some specific instances of this class we need to assign the name and age state of that object in order to do so there is a construct called constructor we will understand constructors in detail but for sake of simplicity here understand that constructor is just like a method it doesn't have any return type and its name is exactly the same as that of the class and here we can pass the values that we want to initialize right so when someone types employee e is equal to new employee at that point of time if we pass here two values like joe and 30 then in that scenario this method is called called when right so what happens here is whatever is the object which we denoted using this keyword again this this keyword accounts for a separate tutorial but for sake of simplicity understand that this represents the object that we are creating at that point of time so this dot name equal to whatever name you have sent me and this dot age equal to whatever age you have sent me in the method now let's save this and try to uh, compile this program and this got compiled now in order to use this employee class and create its object we will create another class employee employee demo dot dot java so uh, let's update this employee demo dot java and actually create some object so we will create joe object and after some time we will create mic object and then we will ask them to greet and then we will ask them to work so let's see how do we create objects we can say employee joe equal to new employee and you remember that constructor where we had two values that we have to pass as parameters so here joe and 30 are the argument values that will pass that will be passed to that method whose parameters were string name and int age so let's create the second one also employ mike equal to new employ mic 25 now we have created two objects one we have created a joe object and we have created a mic object let's ask both of them to greet joe dot greet and we can ask Mike also to greet and now we can ask Joe to work we can ask Mike to work so let's reconfirm that we have compiled our employee or Java and now we are compiling employee demo dot java and it gets compiled now let's execute this employee demo and what should be the output is first of all this joe object gets created then a mic object gets created and then joe greets 
he says that good morning i am joe mike says good morning i am mike and then when we call joe dot work joe says joe is working and then mike also has to work he says mike is working let's execute it and this is the output right so what did we learn we learned that we create classes in order to define the blueprint of entities that are similar to each other and each class defines the state and behavior of that object right so now that we have understood classes and object let's revise it a class represents a template or a blueprint and an object is called an instance of a class we can create an instance of a class using the new keyword something like employee equal to new employee before we close this tutorial let's talk a little bit about naming conventions when we create classes we should remember that the name of the class should start with upper case letter and this is pascal case essentially these should represent this real world entities and therefore they are usually nouns some examples are employee person dog lamp car etc whenever we define methods that define the behavior of those classes we should name the methods starting with lower case letters something in mixed case it should be verb it should describe what a method does example print perform task etc finally the fields that define the state should also start with lower case care letters and which should be mixed case in case they are constants it should be all upper case like max underscore value right now that we have learned about object oriented programming classes and objects and the naming conventions associated with them we are all set to start our setting up our eclipse ide for our more serious programming and then we will dive into understanding java language constructs and actually do object oriented programming in java so guys stay tuned